this is a very typical question. It's a very typical question. So far, we've just looked at circular motion and either there's been no surface that this thing has been spinning on, so it's just sort of spinning freely out in the air, or it's been a flat surface, okay? Those are the simplest kind. But then we, all ha we have all kinds of variations of different things that you might be spinning around, rotating around, okay? And this is one of the examples. Now, in the text, all you're being asked here is, can you resolve the forces? Can you resolve the forces? And you can see everything is all in terms of abstract stuff. None of these angles have been given to you. None of the masses of, <coughs> excuse me, the mass hasn't been given to you. All that kind of thing is left off. So after you resolve the forces, you then will punch on all these numbers and they'll ask you something like, find out what the angular velocity is or find out what speed is the maximum for it to, et cetera, stay on the surface of the cone or something like that, okay? Um, but that's kind of, all of that is mostly numerical work, okay? So I think the key thing in mechanics is being able to see through this diagram, resolve the forces first, and then everything, if you've done that accurately, sort of just fits into place, okay? So to resolve forces, I want us to have a look at this. You can see, I'm gonna think about this in, in two ways, right? Um, you can see there's going to be forces that result from the tension of this string. Oh, there's one thing I'm missing here. There's tension. That's holding it sort of upwards, okay? And then secondly, there's the surface that you're on and that's interacting with you. And what you can see is this normal, this reaction force, okay? That's sort of responding there. So what I want to do is that over here, that's pulling off in a direction toward the center. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Come in. So I'm going to resolve the forces for that. And then you've got the normal force and you're going to resolve the forces for that. Once you've got each of those, you put them together for what's happening vertically and what's happening horizontally, and there are all your equations, okay? So, the first thing you want to write down is resolving forces, because that's what we're actually going to do. Okay? The first one is the tension in the stream. So I'll just write tension. And then, along with, we've seen this before, along with this main diagram, this primary diagram, I'm going to draw two sort of subsidiary diagrams, one of which re represents the tension and one which represents the normal. I think you're crazy if you want to try and put even, like this diagram is as busy as I want any diagram to be. So even though you could try it, like in theory, it's all there, right? I think this has just become too crazy and you'll, you'll miss all the important details, okay? Also, the lovely thing about doing this is that each time you do this is just like what you did with projectile motion, which you're really good at. So it's borrowing a skill you had from before and just applying it here with one key difference that I'll show you in a minute. Okay. So first, let's draw the dimension, direction that the tension is going in. Okay. Its scale doesn't really matter, Okay, like which, which angle it's facing. It's just the direction that's the important thing. It's heading toward the center and upwards. Okay. Then what you've got along with this, and um, I have to use some colors here. What it, you've got along with this is there's a vertical component like this, and then there's a horizontal component like that, okay? Now, um, I got asked a question before. I think it was actually Doris who asked me, so I'll have to <laughs> tell her when we, when I, next year. Why do we like put a box around this? Why not just the triangle, okay? I like the box, here's why, because if I've drawn a box, I guess I'll repeat this later on, then it helps me take advantage of that. This is a rectangle, right? The actual lengths I want are these two. But if I can find either of these, that's equivalent, right? But finding these, these are not the forces. These are the forces. Like we know where this thing is coming from, there's P, where this thing is coming from, and therefore where it is facing is critically important. It makes all the difference in vectors and therefore in these forces and resolving them and combining them properly, okay? So I've got these guys. Because one is the horizontal component, I'm going to call it oops, x, t for tension. And because I've got the other one, which is a vertical component, I'm going to call it y, t for tension. Right, now the last important thing to put onto here is the angle, right? And noting where the angle is is very important. So you can see it's the angle between the string and the vertical. Right? So it's this semi-vertex angle up there. So I'm going to put it in there, which means I can also put it in here because of alternate angles. Okay? Wonderful. So now I've got everything set up to resolve my forces. I just need to use right-angled right -angled triangle tree to find out what these two things are. Okay? So let's start with the horizontal force. If I've got theta over here, 
how am I going to re relate the horizontal force to the tension? Sine. It's just going to be sine, right? So sine theta equals opposite on hypotenuse. So I don't need to write anything else from that. All I need to do is rearrange. So I'm going to put that proper result onto the diagram. Xt is just going to be t sine theta. Yeah, you happy with that? Um, you can almost see by analogy what the vertical component is going to be, but I still like to write it because these will be arranged differently. Sometimes I'll find the, I'm really interested in the vertical one, whatever. So I'll say cos theta, because it's adjacent on hypotenuse, is the vertical component divided by the tension. Okay, so on the basis of this, I'm going to say this is t cos theta. Okay. Now, just before I move on to the normal force, I just want to point out, I think Nikita, you are the one who mentioned actually, this looks a bit, this is funny. It's like, it's the opposite of what we are used to. And that's because, well, in projectile motion and in, on the unit circle, we're so used to cosine being the x-coordinate and sine being the y-coordinate, okay? Can anyone tell me why it is that they are swapped around in this case? Why is it they are swapped around? Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly about the position of the angle. Now, let me just remind you, for example, on the unit circle, when you have your circle around like that, where is it that I measure the angle from to get, say, cos theta, sine theta up here? Where's it measured from? Horizontal. It's measured from the horizontal, right? So, there we go. So there's theta, right? And it measures from the horizontal, good morning, up this way, okay? Because you're measuring from the vertical, Essentially what you're measuring is the complement, right? Like you see, that's, that's the complement up there, complement, complement, okay? So as a result, because you're measuring the complement, cos of pi on two minus theta is sine theta, okay? So that's why everything is switched around. 